Welcome back. Today we're going to look at uh, a different kind of view. This is a 3D view, which we also call pictorial views, and this one is an isometric, which you should all know. I'm going to do one of the other pictorial views, and the one I'm going to do today is called the oblique, the oblique view. And I'm going to draw it as if I'm looking sort of in that direction there. Okay, the way we start this off, we always draw what the front elevation would look like. So if I'm looking in this direction, I'm going to draw this front elevation. And I'm going to draw it down here, and then I'm going to use my oblique techniques to turn that into a 3D view. Right, I'm going to go quiet here, because what I'm hopefully going to do is put the, uh, put the machine on to fast forward. So I'm going to really, really quickly draw a front elevation on here. All the sizes you can see. 80 from front to back, 100 tall, and the other sizes that we need are in place. So I'm going to assume that this circle is centred between the front and the back. So the centre line going up through it should be, uh, which I'm missing a size, this distance along here should be 120. So I'm assuming that the centre line going up through there is 60 in from either corner. OK, I'm going to go quiet now so you can just watch while I quickly rattle through this uh, front elevation that I'm going to do. OK, what I've drawn there is the front elevation. So this is what you're going to see if you're looking in that way. Now, what I'm going to assume is that this has been what's called created up. That means I'm going to assume that that corner hasn't been taken out and it's actually a complete box without a step on it. OK, same thing we ask you to do in isometrics. So what I've done is I've got a complete box there. Then I'm going to take the be cut out later on. Now, what we have to remember in obliques, the key angle is 45 degrees. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to that corner, that corner, and that corner, and I'm going to project back at 45 degrees. So I need to get my 45 degree set square out, which I should have done in advance but didn't. So I've got my 45 degree set square, and I'm going to project away at that angle. This gives you a 3D view, but it's not a very good 3D view. Which is why you don't get as many marks for doing this as you do for isometrics, because isometrics are a bit harder. So, you should already be able to see that the box is now starting to go in that direction. Now, what we do is that anything that's measured along this 45 degree axis, in order to make the shape look real, or make it look in a proper proportion, is that we half any dimension that goes that way. Now, any dimension along that line, or in this way, we don't half. The only ones that we half are the ones going in that direction. So what that tells me is instead of this distance from the front corner, which is here, all the way to the back corner, along that way, instead of measuring 80, I'm going to measure 40. So put my set my ruler on there, measure 40, and I'm just going to run that size all the way around. Take that up, join it to that up the top, and along the top there. So there's my box here. There's the side, there's the top, and this is all the front part of it. Now what we don't have is we don't have our little step coming out. So quite easy to do. What I know is that the distance from that back corner to there is 40. Similarly, I know that from the front corner back up to there is 40 as well, because the whole distance is 80. So I'm not going to measure 40 along this way. Remember, I have to half the size, so I'm going to measure 20. So 2 centimetres gets me to there. Then what I'm going to do is take that all the way along the top. That line I've just drawn, that one there, is that line going there. Now I need a little construction line coming down the way. So I'm going to drop the construction line down there. I'm looking for that corner. I could measure down by working out what that size is, but actually I don't have to because I've got the front corner there. All I have to do is join that up with a 45 degree line. So put that on there. Join that up. 
I know that coming away from this corner, which is here, I've also got a 45 degree line going up this way somewhere. So again, I'll draw a construction line. Not quite sure how long that construction line has to be, but I can use this corner that I've already found. I can take that along. That gets me. That's me now found this corner in here. There it is. And if I've done this really well, these two corners here should line up. That corner there and that one there should line up. And there we go. Absolutely perfect. What can you say? So, now I've got the front surface, which is that one there. I've got this little step here. Here it is there. I've got that surface. That's it going along there. And I've got this kind of L shape, which I'm looking for there. I'm going to really quickly go around that in oops, I'm going to go around it in green to make it stand out and once again I'm going to go quiet here and do it on fast forward. Okay, so there's my finished outline. Now what you've noticed is that I didn't have to do anything to the circle on the front. Now that's a really good thing about oblique drawings is when we did isometric circles we had to split the circle up into 12 and then find all the points around it and then join it up with a freehand curve. It took a really long time to do it. Good thing with obliques is, as long as that circle is on this front surface, so as long as it's on the surface that we're looking at, which is this one here, it's what's called a true circle. So I can just draw that with a compass and I can leave it. It's as simple as that. That's why obliques tend to not get as many marks allocated to them as isometrics do because circles are much easier to do. But remember the circle is only a true circle if it's on that surface that we're looking at. If the circle happened to be on the side there, which would be really unfortunate if they asked you to do that, you would have to go through some sort of construction process similar to isometric. The good thing is that in standard grade they won't ask you to do it on that side, they'll only ever ask you to do it on the front surface of it. So there you go, you don't even have to worry about that. Okay, that's obliques done really quickly. Once again, if you don't know where I got all that from or went a wee bit too quick for you, then uh, two things will happen. One, you'll not do very well in your exam, or two, you'll come and see me and get some more help. Okay, once again, goodbye and good night.